Let's take a look at getting pop punk vocals from this. To this. Yeah, there's some delay and reverb on there. In this video, I will share with you step by step how I usually mix a modern pop punk vocal. And remember, if you want your next song mixed to sound like this, head over to terrybeckleyrecording.com and contact me there. The link is in the description. So let's go through each plugin quickly and I'll explain why I chose it and what it adds. And then afterwards, if you're not too bored, I'll go through each of them again in much more detail. So a quick note about routing. I've got vocal main one here and vocal main two. They overlap, so they're on separate tracks. So what I've done is I've bussed them to this main Vox bus here, which is where I've added my plugins. Then from there, I've bussed them to an all Vox track, because I like to have my vocals and all my instruments on separate faders just before the, the two bus at the end. So let's dig into what I've got here. These vocals were recorded in a imperfect room, in a bedroom, I believe. Uh, it's straight into a Shure SM7B, which was going straight into a USB interface. So typically when I receive vocals like that, the first few plugins I'll use to emulate a outboard plugin chain. So first up, I've got Sooth 2. Now this is just to even out the vocal and create a more consistent frequency response. And then I've peaked it here between sort of three and 4K to get rid of any uh, harsh nasally frequencies. We have a Shep 73, which is used to emulate the Neve 1073 preamp. Not touching any of the controls here, just want to run it through the plugin for a bit of uh, harmonic distortion really. Push the input a little bit and then push the output just to, to make sure the level's decent. Then we have the FG Stress from Slate which is emulating the distressor. So a bit of compression here, not too much. Slow attack, fast release. You create a more even level of the vocal going in, um, which is typically what you would do in a studio. And just before we start getting into the actual mixing, I've got a Pro Q3 here. I'm not dipping anything out. I'm just using the dynamic feature of the plugin just to pull down certain frequencies. Okay, onto the actual mixing plugins. We have a 4020 Retro EQ from Mook DSP to give it some brightness and a little bit, little bit of body. Followed up by another Pro Q3, which is a bit more surgical. Get rid of some boom, some honk. Boost a little bit more of the body and uh, a little bit of DSing here, a little bit of sibilance control. And next up, we have the CLA76 from Waves. It's all my previous video about aggressive vocals. I love this plugin. It really gets the vocals in your face and spitting at you. A slowish attack and a fast release. And next up, a de-esser. Obviously, that, that kind of compression will create a lot of sibilance. So this is here just to uh, transparently tame that. Set at about 6K. Then after that, we have the Saturn 2 from Fat Filter to create some tape emulation. Set to warm tape. And I've driven it quite high here, 38%. Followed up by Arvox from Waves. I don't always use this plugin. Uh, it can be a little heavy handed. So you can see I've just taken off 1.5 decibels of gain reduction there just for the sound that the plugin gives. And then followed it all up with a limiter just to stop those peaks from sticking out. Uh, let's look at the vocal bus, which all of that travels through. So first of all, we have the non-linear summer from Waves. I love this plugin. It creates a, re a really smooth sounding uh, saturation. Another Pro Q3 here, just a bit of build up. Uh, this is a this is a group bus, so all the vocal tracks will eventually go through here. So I was noticing a bit of build up at one and a half k. So that's why again I'm not notching it. I'm just using the dynamic feature of the EQ, and again a bit of uh, control here, sort of sibilance and harshness in that sort of four to five k area. Another soothe. This is again just to smooth the vocal out, stop anything from jumping out. Certain words and phrases I felt were were, were pushing certain frequencies up, making them poke out. So that's what this is taking care of. And finally, the townhouse from Brainworks. This isn't really doing much, this is a safety net. It's just to catch anything that might poke out and jump out when all the vocals are together. You, you'll only see it sort of hit two to three decibels of gain reduction at the most. Okay, and then lastly, let's look at the delays and reverbs. First of all, we have a slap delay here, which I use the H delay from Waves. I set the, the delay time in milliseconds and I bring it down to where it sounds like it's one voice. It just thickens up the vocal. Feedback here, I usually have it around here. I don't want too much of that, but I guess in this, instance I was probably enjoying what it was doing and then I auto-tune the delay just to make sure that everything was perfectly in tune H-delay can make things feel a little loose sometimes you want that sometimes you enjoy that this instance it, it felt a little out of tune so I just used that to uh, to clean it up definitely made the retune speed quick here quicker than I normally would on the main vocal 
Next, we have the stereo delay. I use the Manny Marroquin delay from Waves. I love this plugin again. Set to a half here. Usually I would have this set to a quarter, but I felt there's a lot of, this is a really wordy chorus. So I wanted the delay to be a little slower so it didn't muddy up the next line of the vocal. And lastly, the vocal verb. Again, tuned this one before it went into the reverb. And I used the Valhalla Room big plate preset. And then I would have brought the decay down so that it wasn't too long of a tail didn't get in the way. So you, you won't necessarily hear that there is a reverb happening. It just put the vocals in the space. Okay, so if you're still listening, let's go into each plugin in more detail and, and actually have a look at why I use them. So we have Soothe here. I'm gonna solo the vocal and play it through, see if you can hear. It's very subtle, but there are painful nasally frequencies that just need to be tamed. And sometimes there's a bit of like boomy muddiness. Um, but Soothe does a great job at evening this out. Let's hear it without Soothe and then with. It's not okay, watch when you say. Can you hear that? It kind of does sort of pinch your ear in that sort of three to four K area. So if you bring Soothe in, it will tame that just enough that it doesn't become a problem anymore. It's not okay, watch when you say. And then onto the Shep 73. Again, this, this will be very subtle. This won't do much. It's just a little bit of character that the plugin adds. And then I, I, that's why I've only driven it 1.5 decibels there. Haven't touched any of the EQ knobs, just to engage the high pass filter at 80. It's not okay, watch when you say. Obviously there's a volume bump there because I have pushed the output to three decibels, just because I wanted to be able to hear the vocal properly as I was mixing it, you know, like, like you were with the preamp. And then the distressor to create a more even sounding or a more even level to the vocal. It's not okay, watch when you say. Only the lucky ones will ever break away. It's not that's all really subtle. That's just to emulate the, the plug-in chain that you would typically get from a, uh, from a studio. Okay, this is where it starts to get quite fiddly. I've picked three frequency bands from this vocal that I didn't quite like and made them dynamic so that whenever it, the frequency has jumped out, Pro Q3 brings them back in. It's not okay. Watch when you say. Only the lucky ones will ever break away. It's does a great job of smoothing that out even further, uh, in addition to what Soothe did at the beginning of the plugin chain. Let's put this on loop quickly, and I'll show you what each of the bands sounds like, and you'll probably hear how nasty it is and why it's cool just to bring that down slightly, keep the vocal from, from jumping out in those areas. Okay, what? It's not okay. I know you are want... hey, watch when you there you have it and this big low shelf here there was quite a lot of breaths I could hear them booming that's just to bring down the low end bump you get from those breaths um to stop it from distracting things like the compressors were making that worse as well so I felt like I needed to shove that in there that's why it looks so aggressive okay so the fun bit this EQ is great for boosting top end you see the 8K and I've got quite a big boost here at around 13K, I think that is. Yeah, you can really push this EQ and it still sounds smooth. You, you can obviously go overboard, but uh, for this, I just felt like I just keep going until I don't like it anymore. Let's have a listen. K, watch when you say, only the lucky ones will ever break. That's a lot of air, but I just love how much it, how much it adds. Okay, so we follow up the boosting EQ with a more surgical subtractive EQ for the most part. We've got this around 140 hertz here. It was a bit, bit boomy. Uh, you'll f typically find that with an SM7B around 150. You might just want to tame that a little bit. And you've got this honkiness here at about six, 630 hertz and then some sibilance controlled here at 7K. K, watch when you say. Only the lucky ones will ever break away. So again, that is super subtle. But when you start adding compressors in, you st this would probably have been an EQ I would have gone back and done after I added the compression and realized I needed to tinker a bit more. Okay, my aggression compression. The CLA 76, let's hear this on and off. Okay, watch when you say. Only the lucky ones will ever break away. It's not okay. You can really hear like the K of OK and things like that really jumping out uh, in a good way this time. It's not, it's not poking out. I feel like it's really uh, adding some energy to the vocal. But of course, it also has its own problems, which is the sibilance that it brings out. So that's what the RDSer is doing here. K, 
say watch when you say this plus the uh, added sibilance control from the earlier pro q3 here do a great job of being very transparent but also uh, stopping that from being a problem those s's can be really distracting especially when listening in headphones okay the saturn 2 i love this plugin i love how the tape the warm tape sounds let's have a listen okay watch when you say only the lucky ones will ever break away it's not again i pushed this pretty hard but i felt like in the context of the mix i wouldn't push this hard in solo it sounds overly distorted there but in the context of the mix, I just kept pushing it while I was enjoying it and then brought it back a tad so I knew it wouldn't be too much. Okay, the Arvox. Again, I didn't go too crazy on this because I feel like it can get overly uh, aggressive and, and really kill your vocal. I just like the sound. Um, when, you, when you just sort of kiss it, I, lo I love the sound that it, that it gives. Okay, watch when you say Only the lucky ones will ever break away and then lastly, the L1 limiter, just to stop anything from jumping out, any peaks in the vocal. Okay, watch when you say, only the lucky ones will ever. You can see it's not really doing much, but it's definitely just keeping it from, from anything from getting out of hand. And I set the auto release here. Usually I would, I would set the release to be a bit quicker, but I think the auto release worked with the, with the uh, feel of the song. Okay, let's get into the slap delay. Okay, watch when you say. Only the lucky ones will ever break away. That thickens the vocal up. You can hear it sounds a little metallic by itself, but you don't hear that in the context of the mix. It really helps to, to make that vocal sound thicker. Okay, next let's do the stereo delay. Okay, watch when you say. Only the lucky ones will ever break away. It's not okay. Mind when you. <laughs> that's a nice tale i love delay on vocals it fills the gaps between the words it keeps the vocal sounding really interesting and you can see with with the slower delay set to half it doesn't get in the way of the next line the delay is slow enough that it just adds that bit of character uh, and keeps keeps it sounding interesting and last let's listen to the vocal verb okay watch when you say only the lucky ones will ever break away it's not a So you can hear that the uh, reverb isn't too obvious. It's not supposed to be heard necessarily. It's just supposed to put the vocals in a space. So it doesn't sound so awkward like the, the singer is literally just standing right in front of your face singing. Okay, let's go through the, what's on the uh, Allvox bus. So we have the NLS channel. This, I love how, I, I push this as far as I can because I love how it sounds. Let's put it on loop and see what it does. Okay, watch when you say Only the lucky one will ever break away it's not okay i just love the energy that that provides i love the sound of that i would have toggled through each of these and picked the one that i think sounded best uh, whilst in the context of the mix let's have a toggle through now and just see what they all sound like okay watch when you say only the lucky ones will ever break away it was close between the mic and the Neve. I just think the Neve was way, way smoother. The mic had a bit more energy. I just felt that I was, I preferred the smoother sound. And this is barely doing anything. This is just catching those, those bits that jump out when all the vocals are in. Okay, watch when you say, only the lucky ones will ever. Okay, a second instance of Sooth 2, again, just to keep the frequency response as even as possible. Okay, watch when you say Only the lucky ones will ever break away It's not okay, mind when you say It does a great job of relaxing the, the sort of painful frequencies around 4 to 5k Stops it from building up The townhouse won't be doing anything other than just catching those odd peaks Okay, watch when you say only the lucky one. So there, when we only had the main vocals going, it's barely doing anything because it's, it's only supposed to work when all the vocals are together um, hitting the compressor so it'll just stop anything from jumping out. So there you have it. If you want your next mix to sound like this, head over to terrybeckleyrecording.com, go to the contacts page, drop me a message there.
please subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing more tips like this. I'll be going through every element of this song eventually, looking at the, how I mix the drums, bass, guitars. And, you know, honestly, it'd be pretty cool to monetize this channel. So thank you very much for watching. See you at the next one.